What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a week five recap of the NFL season for 2016. It's back. Tom Brady's back. This man came out and just brutally destroyed the Browns. The Browns are 0-5. They suck. I'm going to tell you this right now, bro. Um, it's very unfortunate that Hugh Jackson took a chance with RG3. And I know it comes off as pretty harsh, but RG3's been a bum for a while, and um, I don't think he's ever going to come back to whatever he was uh, when he went back in the game, in that Seattle playoff game, and just continually uh, continued to destroy his knee. But that's neither here nor there. We know the Browns suck. The Patriots, though, Tom Brady came out and he showed me that I'm a douchebag. Let me just tell you why. I was running around like a lot of other people and saying that he's a system QB. And giving Bill Belichick a lot of credit, which, which Bill Belichick still deserves a lot of credit, but I'm a jackass and I'm gonna be the first to admit it. If, you, if anybody around you hasn't admitted it yet, they're not real people. Listen to me, Tom Brady is a freaking Hall of Famer regardless, dog. That dude came out. I know it's the Browns defense, but the Browns defense still has good pieces on it. You know what I'm saying? Joe Hayden is still there. So like, even though he's a bum most of the time, he had some um, nice plays. But, you know, Tom Brady, 400 yards in his return, three touchdowns, is, two, is Bill Belichick's 250th win. You're talking about two Hall of Fame combos right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, th th this is not... I, I just wanted to slap myself a couple times, bro, watching Tom Brady. I'm gonna be, Listen, I tell you guys like it is. I felt like a total douchebag. I was trying to drink to take the pain away. Tom Brady was out there making me look like a total douche. I was tweeting wild stuff. He's a, he's a system QB, this and that. That man is a freaking, yo, a, a problem. I'm scared, bro, for everybody else that has to play the Patriots. Listen, they may win the Super Bowl, and that douche commissioner, Goodell, may have to give them the Lombardi Trophy, and that's going to be hilarious. That's all I'm really going to say about this. Eagles and the Lions, let, let, me, let me just say this right now. Ryan Matthews should be cut from the team. I know people are going to say, yeah, fumbles happen. Not, not in those kind of situations. Not in those kind of situations. I'm gonna, I'm, listen, let me, let, let me, yo, that watching that, yo, oh my, Carson Wentz went out there, he did what he's supposed to do. When you try to run the clock out, you cannot fumble the ball. Ryan Matthews has been a bum since he's on the Chargers, bro. Listen, I don't give, yo, this dude fumbles the ball. You lose to Jim Caldwell, probably one of the worst coaches to ever coach in the National Football League. Bro, the National Football League, okay? You gotta give Slate some credit, though. You know what I'm saying? He had the force fumble, then a late interception. I give him that credit, but it all started because, yo, this dude Matthews, though, like, how was he still on the team? I, yo, I'm gonna tell you this right now, bro. Philly don't have those nice fans. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to Philly to get those cheese sticks, though. You know what I'm saying? And I used to be, you know, I, I'm not a New York Giant fan or a New York Jets fan, but you know what I'm saying? People could recognize I'm from New York. You know what I'm saying? The way I dress, stuff like that, got the Tims, whatever. And, um,. <clears throat> They're not really nice fans. So I just want to see how the reception is going to be for Matthews. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthews is a bum. And he solely cost them the game. So I don't want people to take this out of context and be like, oh, yo, bro, the Eagles are bad. They lost to the Lions. The Lions play very, very well. Obviously, we know they jumped up to a 14-0 lead. But the Eagles came back the way they're supposed to. And they played a solid game. But in the late quarter, bro, late fourth quarter, you cannot fumble the ball. And anybody that does that, needs to be cut, bro, because there's other guys that are not going to do that that are available on the fucking waiver wire and in free agency and, and doing that other stupid-ass show on the NFL Network about undrafted. There's people that can do the job. Ryan Matthews needs to get the F out of here, bro, and I'm not an Eagles fan, and I was so pissed. I was so amazingly pissed, bro, because you cannot do that. You just can't do it, bro. There's no place for that in the league. You cannot do it. Cut that bum or give it to Sproles or something, man. All right, man, the Bears and the Colts. I'm going to tell you this right now. I thought that the Colts were going to lose this game. Uh, but Luck had a great fourth quarter. Obviously, we know by the touchdown to, um, what is it, Hilton, T.Y. Hilton. That was a dot. That was a dot on the post right, right in the middle. I don't know why nobody played any D, but it is the Bears. And the Bears are supposed to win this game too, but John Fox. John Fox, bro. Look, man, you know, watching these games are very, very stressful for me, and I'm not and I'm not a fan of any NFL team. So you can imagine if I was a fan of any NFL team, I'd have already lost my shit. I'll be outside these stadiums with picket signs like, yo, this guy has to go. Yo, this coach has to go, this player. Because it, it's so frustrating to watch these guys just destroy, you know, let, like, these, these are historically great franchises, the Bears, and then you put a coach like John Fox there. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, like, what are you doing? You, I, I don't understand. The dude is washed up. He got fired from a Super Bowl contender team. 
You understand what I'm saying? Why would the Bears hire him? That doesn't make any sense. The guy sucks, bro. But I, yo, look, man. I, I don't know what people are doing, and I don't understand why it's happening. I'm going to tell you this right now, though. There is no place for John Fox in the NFL. Not even as the water boy, bro. The guy is a horrible coach. Now, Andrew Luck played horrible throughout. He's reminded me of Tebow. He's playing horrible for most of the quarters, and then all of a sudden he comes out and, you know what I'm saying, bro, he, he delivers in the fourth. But... You know, the Bears had a chance to win this game, okay? The, the Bears really had a chance to win this game. I told you guys before the season started, I don't see anything happening with the Bears. I told you guys that. As long as John Fox is the head coach there, I don't expect much. So I'm not going to go ahead and recant that statement. I'm going to stay with that statement. John Fox does not deserve to be an NFL coach. Let's just call it what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it is what it is. He's like a washed up Lovey Smith. Look, it's over. The Bears season has been over. Jay Cutler's injured, but Jay Cutler doesn't really have anything to do with it. He was just throwing picks anyway, so it don't really matter. But it's it's over for the Bears. The Colts still got hope because they're in that weak-ass division. The Titans and the Dolphins. Let me just say this right now. I despise Chip Kelly. I don't hate him because hating is too powerful of a word. I despise him. Because when I watch DeMarco Murray play, I wonder this, bro. Why the hell wasn't he playing on the Eagles? This man was moving around like he had the moves like Jagger, though. I Look. Let me just let me just say this, man. Chip Kelly has a lot to answer for. He has a lot to answer for. Um, I'm not really feeling him in any kind of way. I really think that he's a joke. I think he's a joke as a coach in the National Football League. I think he should have stayed in college. Um, I, I know people support everything that he does, but if you just look at the Titans with Demarco Murray right now, if he was able to, you know, you know, put him in there, like just trinkle him in a little bit with the Eagles. They would have had a much better season. The Eagles have been through so much, man. That's why it was very, very tough for me to watch them lose yesterday because they deserve to go 4-0. Carson Wentz shouldn't have threw his first pick. None of that stuff should have happened. Ryan Matthews, again, I'm going to go back to that one. Ryan Matthews needs to be cut right now, like right, right this minute. Right this minute. He needs to be cut right this minute. But the Titans played a hell of a game. The Dolphins suck. Let's just call it what it is. Um, you know, Adam Gates, he's going to be fired shortly. Uh, Tannehill is terrible. He's terrible, man. He he's so bad. He's so bad, bro. I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I, I I don't even want to talk about this. Like this dude is so trash, making all this. He needs to donate his money to breast cancer awareness right now. He needs to just do that, right? Like he has. It's no way that these guys should be walking around at the highest level, playing like garbage, and still receive payment. And that's why I'm all for guys that try to renegotiate their contracts when they're playing well. Because when you're playing well, you deserve the money. When you're playing bad, they should be able to take your money away. There should be no guarantees because you don't deserve to play with that shield. You suck, Ryan Tannenhill. Redskins and the Ravens. This game was so tough, man. I, yo, Steve Smith went out. Look, look, part of the reason that the Panthers suck right now is because Steve Smith left. I know guys are going to say Kelvin Benjamin, all the other people. No. Steve Smith was so important to Cam Newton's development. And people don't give Steve Smith the credit that he deserves, you know, since he's left. I know he's older and stuff like that, and they thought he was washed up. The level, I know he got hurt, but the level that he plays at, you got to see it yesterday when he wasn't on the field. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go right to the play that decided this game. Perriman's foot was out when he burnt Josh Norman in the right side of the end zone. I'm going to go right to that. Josh Norman's a bum. He left because of a fake injury after he got dotted, but that play... When they called it back, that was the deciding factor because there was no Steve Smith. And you got to see it, that Steve Smith is all reliable. You guys got to see it firsthand. I've been raving about Steve Smith forever. Steve Smith has been such a consistent wide receiver. He's short, but that dude is a big man on the field. And he gets respected by all, and anybody that he's ever played against respects that man. Except for Jalen Ramsey, a rookie that's just saying that he's just, well, he's young and he's trash talking. That's fine. By the way, the Chiefs, Jags, Seahawks, and the Saints are on a bye week this week. So there won't be any games from them. But that one play with Perriman, okay? Uh, Wallace tries to, you know, make a play at the end of it, but Compton hit the hell out of him on that, on that little in route he was doing. You know, Mike Wallace, he's a little washed up too. But Perriman, that incomplete pass, that was the problem. That was the major thing, and the Redskins played well enough to win the game. You know what I'm saying? It was a defensive struggle. They played well enough to win the game. I'm not a fan of Kirk Cousins, but he stepped up and made big throws when they counted, and that's pretty much what it is. Perriman, bro, Perriman's going to be hes gonna be a good player. I know he missed the whole last season, but he's going to be a great – look, the guy had he, – he could catch those balls. He, could catch, he, he sucked in college, but he could catch these balls. He has the speed, and he's able to do it. I wish his, feet, I wish his foot was in because Josh Norman got burnt deep. You know what I'm saying? And it, it would have been great to see it, but – 
it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, Steve Smith was a huge part of that offense. And I believe that he's been a huge part of whatever offense he's ever been on. Texas and the Vikings. You already knew what was going to happen in this game. Congratulations to the Vikings and the Vikings fans for going 5-0. and Let me just say this right now. Marcus, Shure Mar Marcus Shurels, listen, look, look, bro, when you run, when you start running back kickoffs and punts and all kind of craziness, when the special teams start clicking on a team where the defense is so stout, and bro, Bradford has thrown six touchdowns and zero interceptions. Let me say that again. Sam Bradford, who I consider a bum, has thrown six touchdowns and zero interceptions. That is pissing me off uncontrollably, but I'm happy for him. I think he sucks, but the Vikings defense, when you have a great defense, it makes you a lot better than you actually are. Just ask Eli Manning. And I'm going to tell you this right now. The Vikings are a dangerous goddamn team, okay? So anybody that has to play them, I don't give a F if it's Aaron Rodgers. The, we don't, we don't got to say the Bears. The Bears suck. NFC North. Is that, I think that's where they are. Yeah, the NFC North. Uh, I'm a, let me just be very, very clear with this. The Vikings are taking that division, and they're going to just ramrod anybody, bro. I believe at this point... They are competitive with everyone. If I was doing the power rankings today, I would have to put the Patriots number one just because Tom Brady's back and that team is scary right now, even with whatever receivers they have. The Vikings would have to be number two to me. The Vikings have outright looked like a dominant force on the field on all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. And that, that's the bottom line. Like Watching them play, I really enjoy watching the Vikings play. And I can't say that about a lot of teams. I really enjoy it because I like defense. I play defense in football, so I love defense. And that defense is clicking. Mike Zimmer got them boys playing like savages. They're not giving up any more than 17 points max. You know what I'm saying? And they're scoring points. That team is dangerous, man. That, that team is really, really dangerous. I'm just letting people know right now, be very, very careful. You got to play the Vikings, man. Them boys ain't playing around. Hide your, hide your cheeks, your butthole, everything when they come into town. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into the Jets and the Steelers. Let's just say this right now. The shining life for the Jets was when Brandon Marshall caught that ball. You know, he tipped it off of the dude's head or whatever and caught it in the end zone. That was the biggest part. That was the only time that it was something exciting going on for the Jets. Let's just be honest about it. Other than that, you know, the Jets suck. The Steelers came out, manhandled them, did whatever they wanted to do to them. And it was pretty much, that was what it is. They were... Look, it was so bad, Ben Roethlisberger was still throwing touchdowns in garbage time. Like, there was no reason to throw that touchdown to Coates. There was no reason to do it. But you know what? The Jets suck. Take advantage of it. Darrell Rivas needs to be moved to backyard, like, lawnmower, lawnmower cutter, not even the safety. He's a bum. I don't care about what anybody's saying. I don't care. Oh, yeah, but he, no. He's a bum. He has to go sit down and just shut up. He made his money. He did holdouts. He did all that stuff with the Jets when Rex Ryan was there. He's made his money. Congratulations to him. Now get the hell out of here. Make somebody else make some money. You're done, bro. You're done. The Jets are done. Todd Bowles should be fired. A lot of shit should be going on over there, bro. Fitzpatrick, when you sign, when you sign Pick Patrick, when you sign a guy like Pick Patrick, bro, and you got another guy in fucking G yo, Geno Smith is terrible. But I would take Geno Smith right now. And Geno Smith is terrible. And I know, you know, Fitzpatrick wasn't as bad or whatever, but people are gonna say, oh yo, bro. No, he sucks. Let's just call it what it is. The man sucks. We have to be honest with ourselves. We gotta be able to accept the fact that dudes out here are running around and they're bums. Falcons and the Broncos. Let me just tell you something about this game. You know, Trevor Simeon was out. They put it, yo, bro, look, I don't know what was going on. They put it Paxton Lynch like he was the truth. I know he was, I know what's his name was injured, uh, Simeon or whatever like that. But you got to see why the team really likes Simeon and why Paxton Lynch is a rookie that shouldn't be out there right now. Look, 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 look. The Denver Broncos defense was supposed to, um, what is that word? It, it was supposed to enhance any QB that took the field. Pretty much supposed to be a defensive game, and they were supposed to be able to take care of business, and that was supposed to be what was supposed to happen. That's how it was supposed to work. Simeon was able to do that. Paxton Lynch showed a lot of rookie traits, a lot of dumb passes, a lot of picks. I'm not mad at him. He's a rookie. That's supposed to happen. But when the Falcons are able to do what they got to do with their dual threat, Coleman, you got the other dickhead running around. Um, what, what, what the hell's his name, bro? Dude's a savage, bro. Dude's running around doing what? Devontae Freeman. He's doing whatever he wants to do at any time. That's very, very difficult. And then you got Julio Jones. That You, you just can't cover the guy. It, it doesn't matter what you do. You, you can't cover Julio Jones. I don't even know why they even go out there and try to do it. It looks so stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're not... Talib, you're not covering Julio one-on-one. -on -one. Like, it was so stupid. I saw him a couple of times trying to, you know, D him up. One you're not d that man up one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know who's the defensive coordinator. Actually, I do know who the defensive coordinator is. Isn't it that douchebag, Wade Phillips? I don't know. Is it him? I don't know. Whatever, bro. I, it's just too many names. I don't really care. But it doesn't make any sense that they had him one-on-one -on -one with anybody. You got to double that man. You got to, yo, disguise coverages. You got to do a lot of different things, Broncos. I don't care if you're the Super Bowl champions. 
Julio Jones is playing on another level right now. Bro, a whole nother level. You cannot defend him one-on-one, -on -one, jackasses. You have, yo, and I know a lot of people didn't give the Falcons a shot. Me neither. I thought the Broncos would win the game regardless who they had that quarterback. I thought their defense was that style. Then I realized they got a freaking a dual running back threat. They got freaking Coleman running out the backfield on seam routes. The Falcons are dangerous, bro. They're dangerous if they appreciate like what Julio Jones is. And like uh, Matt Ryan said, he's not gonna force the ball in. As long as Matt Ryan doesn't force the ball to Julio, the Falcons are a dangerous team. Let me just make sure you guys understand that. The way they're playing right now, that, for them to go out there and just beat on the Broncos like that at home, that's a problem. I don't think you guys understand. That, that, that's, a, that, that's pretty much, bro, I don't want to say nothing, but that's a kind of a major problem. But we'll see what happens. The Broncos got a short week. We'll see how that transpires if, if Simeon can start again. Paxton Lynch is not ready for NFL football. Bengals and the Cowboys. Okay. Yeah, bro, okay. You got rookies out there just doing whatever. You got Dak Prescott doing whatever. You got Ezekiel Elliott. Why does Ezekiel Elliott look so fast to me now? He, I don't remember him being that fast. That dude was running all over the Bengals. And let me tell you this right now. Marvin Lewis, I don't, yo, I don't, how is he still a coach in the NFL? Let's not talk about that, though. Let's talk about the wide open holes that Ezekiel Elliott was looking at. I'm going to tell you this right now. My grandmother could have ran through those holes. They were so wide open. The Cowboys offensive line, I know they said that the Titans has like the, the number one old line, all that BS. The Cowboys old line, even with injury, is a serious, serious thing, bro. I'm gonna let you guys understand this right now. A lot of people are asking me, you know, G Mayo, do you think that Tony Romo should start when he comes back? No! I think you leave it the way it is right now. Because I don't believe don't play with momentum. Momentum is so dangerous. Don't play with it. Don't, don't even, I don't even want to say nothing. Like, don't even try to play with momentum because it's going to hurt you. Let them do what they're doing. Let them play against anyone and let's, let's see what happens. If anything, if anything gets crazy, then the momentum has stopped naturally, then you can do something with Tony Romo. I do not believe you mess with this chemistry right now. You can't do it. You can't do it, bro. Listen, I'm gonna say, if you do that, if they do that, Yo, I, I, I don't know. The, I don't know. Yo, Jason, Jason, I want Jason Garrett fired. You know, if, if, unless unless it's Jerry Jones who tries to always be like the head coach and the GM directly says to put Tony Romo in, I would just eat the money that you're paying Tony Romo, get rid of him this year. You know what I'm saying? When this year is over, I'll get, I know he's statistically great. He has a back injury. He has shoulder injuries. All kind of injuries. This dude's always hurt. Time to get rid of him. Dak Prescott is the future. Ezekiel Elliott is the future. That old line is the future. Defensively, they were playing very, very well. I think you leave it the way that it is. Um, obviously, the scores that they got were in garbage time. The Bengals sucked. They weren't doing anything for three quarters. Defense locked up. Offense was moving the ball. And that's pretty much the way it went. I wouldn't do anything with that chemistry. So for the, for the questions you guys ask me, no. I would leave Dak Prescott in there. Bills and the Rams. Rex Ryan delivered, bro. You know what I'm saying? Bro, just like UPS. I'm going to tell you this right now, though. I wasn't expecting the Rams. Look, I don't know how the Rams are winning to begin with. The Bills, in this game, this was a very, very tough game for me. Because, you know, Los Angeles Rams, I'm trying to figure out, like, yo, are they really serious? Are they really going to beat? Because I'm all for the players. I just think that Jeff Fisher's a horrible coach. But I'm all for the players, bro. All for them. Me, support the players. Because the owners are just ravishing and do whatever they want to do. The NFL themselves, they lease in these players. They don't care about a lot of the stuff that goes on with them. I'm all for my players, bro. Every one of them to get their money. Because they're the top level tier, they should be paid. But when you suck, you should not be paid the same amount. They should be able to deduct your money. The same way you get money when you play well, just be able to take money away. But let me just say this about the Rams. Jeff Fish is your head coach, okay? So when Jeff Fish is your head coach, bad things are going to happen. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Bad things are going to happen when Jeff Fisher is your coach. So when you look at Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan is like that. Rex Ryan talks a lot of trash. He's backed it up over the last couple weeks. That's cool, but Tom Brady was in there when he just beat the Patriots. And they're going to get their ass when they play the Patriots again. But that has nothing to do with anything. They came out and they took care of the Rams, you know, bolstered themselves back up over 500, which is great. But I'm not really, I don't know how to react with it because when I look at Jeff Fisher's face, I'm disgusted. I don't, even, I don't even want to talk, like when I see Jeff Fisher's face, I just automatically get upset. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like I just really, you know, my veins start boiling. Like I just, yo, he is, I don't know how this man is still a head coach of the National Football League. I don't know how it's happening. 
but I will give the uh, Buffalo Bills credit for going on the road and taking care of business. It is what it is. Chargers and the Raiders. Let me just say this before I go into the whole fact that the Raiders are going to be a force, okay? Let me just say this right now. Phillip Rivers has consistently been one of the top quarterbacks in the league. I still believe to this day that the Giants would have kept Phillip Rivers or however it happened. I forgot who drafted who. I forgot. They, they drafted him, right? Who drafted Phillip Rivers? The, the San Diego Chargers drafted Eli Manning. He said no. They sent him to the Giants. I said that's how it happened. Anywhere that Phillip Rivers would have went, he would have won a Super Bowl except for where he's at right now with the Chargers because the Chargers have been asked even, yo, they, they just, they make the worst, worst decisions ever all the time. And, you know, either defensively, something, they're not, whatever it is, Phillip Rivers is a top tier quarterback. I just wanted to say that. Hunter Henry is going to be a great tight end in this league. I love what's happening. I think that he can replace um, Antonio Gates eventually. Antonio Gates still got a little bit of stuff, but obviously we know he's doing performance enhancing drugs. Dude's getting old. He don't care. He's juicing up. He don't, it don't really matter to him anymore. He's like, yeah, I got to make this money. I got I got kids to feed. And he don't give a F. He going he gonna to cheat. He going to do whatever he got to do. And I, I respect that, bro. He's just trying to get his money. But the Raiders, though. The Raiders got fight, bro. These dudes are official. They are ready to, bro, they are ready to go. I just say to myself, they are ready to go. And the way that they played this game down the stretch, it was unbelievable. Derek Carr. I got to let you guys know this right now. Amari Cooper is a stud, but Derek Carr, though, and his deep throw accuracy, you got to be very afraid. I would be, I would be very, very afraid of that, of this team, the Raiders team. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I'll, I'll be very afraid. They're four and one. They're not playing games. That's all I'm saying. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump, or jump, go crazy, whatever like that. But I've always loved the Raiders. I've always loved Al Davis. He may have done some crazy things, but he's, he, I always loved them as an owner. Um, the Giants and the Packers, which was a Sunday night game. Let me, I'm gonna say a few things. Eli Manning sucks. I'm, I'm, I don't care about all the arguments. Oh yeah, but Eli did this. No, Eli's garbage. He, he's, he's trash. He's outright trash. The one highlight was that wobbly ass throw that he threw to uh, you know to OBJ. But OBJ, I thought one of the foot was out, one of his feet was out of bounds. It wasn't. Whatever like that. OBJ is great. He's athletic. I just hope that he stops with the temper tantrum. He did kiss the net. They made up after the net punched him in the face when he had the temper tantrum. The other day, I, I love all that. Let me just say this about the Packers. Okay. The Packers are not gonna win the Super Bowl this year. We already know that because the Minnesota Vikings are in the division and they're not beating them. But Eddie Lacy, I don't know how Eddie Lacy is still playing in the football in the National Football League. Eddie Lacy is a fat, outrageous dude, bro. The dude is disgusting. Just leave Starks out there and cut Eddie Lacy and take the penalty, take, take the cap penalty. He is horrible. It is no, yo, bro, this dude is so useless right now. I don't know how you're running around, and that's your job. And I look at the um, you know, the undrafted series, and I look at these guys that are ready to play. You cannot be a running back looking like Eddie Lacy. You can't, bro, it's Jerome Bettis would break a big run. Jerome Bettis was a big man. Light on his feet, able to do. Eddie Lacy just a fat guy. He's just a fat guy walking around. There was no way that anybody could say anything like anything else other than that to me. It's not, bro, the guy's a fat man walking around. That's it, he's plump, and that's to stop, and he needs to stop right now. He's a plump man that's running around and doing nothing. That's what he's doing. That's pretty much what that man is doing right now. He is a disgrace. Jordy Nelson looks good. The rest of the team looks good. Cobb did that great play, but he got blasted in his back by Lennon Collins, though. But it was a, it was a decent game overall. The Giants look horrible. They looked field goals. Eli Manning made every, wild, ridiculous throws. He is trash. But it's all about Eddie Lacy on the Packers side. The Packers will not be a sufficient team. As I know he got an ankle injury or something like that. He probably dropped a donut and twisted his ankle. I don't know what he's doing. I'm going to let you know this right now. Eddie Lacy should not be in the National Football League at running back. He should be a lineman. Until next time, one love.